uh, the reason you have to be involved. There was one year, a few years ago, I was asked to kill a bill. Lobbyists are not only asked to help pass bills, they're also asked to help kill bills. I went in and killed a bill. Now, this organization, unfortunately, did not retain me after the General Assembly. Bills, um, you may know, may or may not know, but Congress and the General Assembly they operate on two-year cycles. And in the first year of a cycle, if a bill, a bill is not passed, sometimes instead of killing it outright, they will do what's known as gently lay it on the table. We're so gentle and cordial in the General Assembly. Uh, and, wh and what that means is the bill is carried over to the next year. It's not killed outright, but it's carried over to the next year. Now, what happens, though, is usually November or December, the committees will get together and decide what bills from the previous session they will actually take up in January. And that's what happened this one year. And I knew this was going on, but this one group was slow. And they didn't know that the bill that they thought they had killed the previous year was actually coming up again. And I told them that it would, but they weren't following it. So the committee in like late November decides, yeah, I think we're going to take this up in January. The committee met on the General Assembly uh, meets on the begins on the second Wednesday of every January. This particular committee met on Thursday. This carried over bill was considered by them. The committee said, yes, we're going to refer to the full house. Next day, I get a call, Joe, this bill's up again. We're in trouble. OK, why didn't you call me two months ago? <laughs> Over the weekend, I called several delegates. And I said, you got to kill this bill. It's bad. you got to kill it, da, da, da. Fortunately, by the time the bill came up the following Monday or Tuesday, I, I was able to get 11 delegates to vote against the bill. Now, that was enough that, the, um, that it, it caused it raised some concerns. When you have 11 delegates who vote against something, some people begin to wonder, why, well, why did 11 delegates vote for it? And it was bipartisan. There were Republicans and Democrats who voted against it. Bills go through, all the bills have to be considered by each house, and, and a little before halfway, that's when they have to be done. And it's a day where we call a crossover, where all bills have to be finished, and then they go to the other house. And uh, as you can imagine, with 45 days, that's roughly 20 days that they have to consider. And then they get the other bills, the other house's bills. So we got, so we get through this first weekend, and then we get to the other half. We get into crossover. Fortunately, we'd begun to build a coalition. It was only six weeks, but in that six weeks, we were able to get enough people to come out for the committee meeting in the Senate, and had enough folks to contact their senators on this committee to tell them to kill the bill that we got it killed in committee. Okay, It would have put a lot of people out of business if the bill had passed. The importance of committee, I, I can't stress it enough. So now, why? I, the next step is, or the next thing you might be asked, well, all right, you're telling me this, but how does that play out with what we're doing with the health care bill and the firearms uh, bill? When we know that these bills are going to come up in committee, all right, we're going to desire to come out in force. We'd like them to know that we like these bills. We desire for them to pass. The one year that I had this, the story I just told you, when we got to the Senate committee, I had 250 people show up to this one meeting. My opponents only had 50. It was pretty obvious what the general sentiment of Virginia was on that particular bill. Okay? And believe me, we had some powerful opposition groups against us. So when the email goes out that our bills are coming up, Okay, they were going to be addressed by the committee. Drop your plans. Make do whatever you can to get out there to show in force that we are supporting these bills. Generally speaking, uh, when a bill is assigned to a committee, the chairman will look at the docket full of bills and determine what bills are actually going to be heard in the next meeting. Now, the committee the committee meetings, uh, for the most part, are set at certain times on certain days every week. So you can count on that. But for example, let's say that the, a certain committee meets every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, The chairman will basically sit down one to two days beforehand and look at the bills that are assigned to his committee and determine, OK, I only have an hour and a half to look at all these bills. Let's say he has 37 bills in his committee. He's going to be able to look at those and say, well, you know, I know I can only get to 13 of these in the next meeting. 
I will be in touch with the chairman and his uh, legislative aide and learn whether or not, if, for example, our bill might be on, might be one of the 37, but it may not be one of the 13 that's coming up in the next committee. But if that meeting, if that committee's meeting Tuesdays and Thursdays, it might not be coming up on Tuesday, but it might be coming up on Thursday. Okay. So a lot of times the notice for when these bills are going to come up will be very much last second. Okay. So be prepared. One of the things we can do for you is once we know exactly which committees uh, these bills uh, will be assigned to, we can at least let you know that. We can at least let you know when the committees normally and regularly meet. You can at least be begin to think about that. Okay, if they call, can I go to this committee? All right? So be prepared for that. Um, now, uh, another thing that we collectively will be doing is watching bills in general. Uh, the lady that was introduced before as the one who coordinated all this, Carol Stops, is also going to be working on the budget. So if we have any budget hawks in here, you really ought to get together with Carol and help her out. All right, the budget is a big deal. I'm sure all of you have been hearing already about the potential for increase in taxes. How many of you would like to give up more taxes? Come on, please, raise your hands. Anybody want to raise want to have more, pay more taxes to the government? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, please. The government would love your money. If you don't desire to see your money taken away from you, then you've got to be watching this budget, okay, and working with Carol and others on that, especially if you have an expertise in that area. Um, okay. Uh, as, we, as we finish up here, uh, one of the things we're going to be doing right now as we close, we're going to be dividing up into two groups. We're looking for leaders on Lobby Day next week. Uh, one of the things we're going to do, you heard Carol talk before about the letters that she's asked you to write. Uh, you also have copies in your hands of the actual bills. Uh, you have Delegate Bob's issue brief, okay? And we'll have our issue brief available to you. We are going to walk around to every single office of every single General Assembly member, all 140 on that day, and deliver the bill, an issue brief, and if anybody has a personal letter, hand that to either the legislative aide, which will normally be the case, or if the legislator happens to be in his office at the time, Hopefully, we'll be able to meet with them. Now, as you can well imagine, if I were to lead all 150 of us in here right now, that would be a bit unruly, okay? So what we're looking to do is to have, hopefully, 10, 15 leaders who would be able to, now let's do some simple math here. If we have 140 offices and we have 14 leaders, that's only 10 offices that you'd have to go to. It might take you five to 10 minutes to stop in at each office. You do five minutes, 14, with a, it's about an hour, hour and, a half, hour and a half maybe, okay? That's what we're looking for uh, to help us out next Monday. If you think that you have enough confidence to lead a small group of people next Monday, please come up and see me after this meeting. I'm going to meet with you in a group over here, that corner. Now, the other aspect of what we are trying to do in transforming our government here has to do with the people that we elect, okay? Now, I know several of you have probably been reading and maybe even subscribed to, throw the whole mess of them out. Throw the bums out. Not this bum. <laughs> Not Randy Forbes either, right, exactly. So I, I, would, I would ask that you think, as, as Bob said, pray, think, act. <laughs> let's, let's throw them out. Let's pray about it and then think about it and then act. There are several good legislators, okay, uh, in, in uh, our bodies of government. So, uh, but in order to do that, we've got to find good people. We then have to get people who are going to be willing to support them financially, prayerfully, and with action, okay? In order to do that, we have to get actively involved in the process through the organizations that are already there be they Republican or Democrat. Believe it or not, we can change the Democratic Party as much as we may not think we can, we can. But most of our efforts will probably be through the Republican Party. Um, so the, uh, Darren up here, who's been our MC, he's gonna meet with a group of folks who are interested in working on that over in this corner, okay? So if you uh, think you'd like to help in that vein, meet with Darren after that. I think I'm gonna close now and turn this back over to Darren. Thank you for your time.